Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Jayco Eagle 357 MDOK fifth wheel. You guys have picked a beautiful unit here. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration. On your campsite, of course your slide. Leave room for that awning to come out on the slide, for your outdoor kitchenette to open up and your big awning here as well. And over on your off camp side, you need to think about your slides over here. You have plenty of room for them to come in, in and out unhindered. Leave yourself a nice walking space along this side as well. And then I want you to think about where your power and water connections are gonna be. They are gonna be on your driver's side of your tow vehicle, just behind the front. There's your docking station and there's your power. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, we're gonna unhook our hitch with our auto leveling system. Pull both your arrows in. That's gonna give you a green light. You're going to simply lift the front of the unit to get up off your hitch, lower it back down, get kind of level, and then hit auto level. Auto level is gonna start running down all your auto leveling jacks as well as adjust your front legs until your unit's level. Once your unit's level, this light will start flashing. Once that light starts flashing, you're okay to hook up your power and water. Big long 50 amp cord here. Plugs in here on the side. The way these new ones work. As they go into the left, turn it to the right and then put on your gray washer. That locks it in here. At the end of that 50 amp cord, if you need to plug into 30 amp somewhere, there's a 50 to 30 amp dog bone, we call it. And then if you need to plug in a home, there's a 30 to 110 you can throw on here. Just run appliances accordingly when running off 110. You don't want to pop a bunch of breakers. Got our power hooked up, let's hook up our water. Turn your docking station here. Run over a couple of things real quick. Here's where you'll sanitize. Here's your, where your tank flush, and here's where your city and dry, and dry camp water. City water connection, first and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. I always use this when putting water into these spigots here. Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn on your hose yet. First thing we're gonna do is turn this to city water. Green to the left, blue to the right. Blue to the right. Green to the left. We're hooked up with city water. Still don't turn your hose on. Come right here to your hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point, it should pull right up off here. Tempt this one hand here. Lifts right up off here. Wanna make sure the drain plug's back in there. Throw some plumber's tape on there. Get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there snug, you can go ahead and turn on your hose. After your hose has been out for a while, we are level and stable. You can go inside and deploy your slides if you need to get to your water spigots. Open up water, all of your water spigots. Once you've got water flowing out of them steadily, no more air in the lines, then you can shut them off and go ahead and turn on your hot water heater from indoors. There is a non off electric element right here. The only time you want to turn this on here is if you're hooked up to 110. Turn it on here as well as indoor electric. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Come out here and look and see if these are bubbled up. If they are bubbled up, simply press them back in, they are a reset. 
Now let's say we're gonna go camping, we're not gonna hook up to a city wider, we're gonna go boondocking. In that case, we're gonna start with a tank fill. Set your pieces like this, glue down, green to the left, fill your tank up. Now the way to tell when this is full is to go inside and on your control panel where you check the levels of your battery and your black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. That'll tell you when this is full. Once that's full, remove the hose, go from tank fill to dry camp. So now we're gonna turn our blue to the left or to the right, our green down. Now we're on dry camp. Now we can turn on our water pump. You can turn it on here or indoors. Only turn on your water pump when utilizing the potable water. Don't turn on your water pump when running off city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all hooked up with power and water to camp. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside unit, starting here in the docking station. You have a light up here. You're prepped for solar here. You can plug in a solar panel there and it'll trickle charge your batteries. Here you have an outdoor shower. Just hook up this blue spray handle onto that. Quick connect on the end there. Again, your hot water heater. Here's where you'll bypass when you're winterizing. And this is the side that you'll winterize on. You turn these to winterize. Turn that to bypass and that'll suck your winterization right in there. Here's your black tank flush. We'll talk about that when dumping our black tanks. Cable and satellite hookups. Black gray tanks. That's where we'll dump them at and an access panel to dump your, run your hoses down through. Your pass-through storage here, your lighting here can be turned on to regular or to motion. Again, your auto leveling system. This is your battery disconnect. That'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. That'll disconnect all the battery power to the unit. Your propane here. There's the regulator for that. Coming back here again off your campsite, off campsite. This is a flue for your furnace. Do not block the opening. And remember, if you run your furnace, this does get hot. Your power. Down there's our dump. We'll easily access that when our slides are closed and leaving. On your slides here is an access panel to the back of your fridge. There's a vent for your microwave. Your low point drains, again, easier access once our slides are closed. Ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year and check the seams on your roof and caulk as needed. You're also prepped for a Furion backup camera. Coming over onto your campsite. When your slides close, there's a manual crank for your air tire right there. There's where that will connect in. Here's your lighting for your outdoor grill. Here's your quick connect hose that will connect right there as well as right there. Also prep for a TV out here. TV backer here, 110 with GFCI reset. 110 and uh, cable or 12 volt. Continuing down this side of your outside, you have an outdoor light, that a step light, your outdoor speakers. Another kitchen area over here. This is a nice prep area. Over here, this is for a Furion Bluetooth uh, wired, Bluetooth pre-wired for a speaker that will set in here and charge. It's one you can order from them. You have another spot indoors for that. Another low point drain. Also prepped out here for TV, that was, light was just set to motion. You see how that came on? Access panel in there for your low point drains. Your other propane. On the front of the unit, your battery. Check your battery posts. Make sure those have with the loose coming down the road. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look inside your unit. So immediately come inside your door. First thing I like to point out in every trailer is where the fire extinguisher is located. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. 
Also at the entry doorway, as soon as you come in at the floor, is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention that's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you are boondocking, nothing plugged in, charging your battery, use your battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. To the right of that, on the floor is also your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Coming up the wall, you'll see a few of these throughout the unit. They're a temperature reader. This is your fan down here. And to your right, your control panel. Before going into that, right above this is a template for techs. If you ever decide to wire this entire unit for solar, this is where the wiring's at. Come to our control panel, touch that. We're gonna go to home. First and foremost, there's a great app from BM Pro at the app stores. And you can do all of this, J Command BM Pro. All your lights, your awnings, your slides from your phone. So at, at the home button, we have your climate, your lights, your motors, your energy, and your tanks. Or you can do them individually through here. We'll start with our tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump, fuse and potable water. Here's where you turn on your water heater hooked up to electric, your gas heater, or your water heater hooked up to gas. There are your tanks. Here's your leveling system. You can do that from in here. Here's your temperature. We're gonna turn that on. It's on cool right now. Here's your AC running. You can change this to heat. You have to set it over the 77 degrees. It is in here right now. Just so you can hear it running. There it goes. And we shut our heat, turn our, go back to cool here. And shut everything off. Now here's your lighting, you have to scroll to go through that. But you see, all your lighting can be controlled from here. Down here you can check your tire pressure. And here it shows right now we're running off battery. Uh, it shows your battery system and propane. Down here on the bottom is your lighting. Number one will turn everything on. Number two is outdoor. Number three will shut everything off. There's another spot to turn on your water pump if you don't want to go through your panel here. Now we're going to come over to our arrows. I'm going to start you at off. Pair your device here. Awning one, awning two, slides one, two, three, and four. We're going to go to awning one and hit extend. Open your door back up. One handed here. Show your awning extended. Show you how far to run them out. So you're only going to want to run them out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see your brown bar. That will extend past that. So watch it as you run it out. Make sure that you don't run out too far. Get that ran back in here. I'll show you your other one working here. You also have an awning on your campsite slide, which would be awning number two. Extend that. So you're running that out. Run that back in. So same thing, run that out just until that flap falls down. And then we'll run in all the slides from this control panel after we go through the unit here. All right, close your exterior door here. Come back to your control panel. And turn your AC back on. Coming through the unit. Your dinette. This will lift up on hydraulic. Extend that out for your table. You also have storage under your seats. These will go on the backs of your chairs. You also have storage over here in this piece that you want to strap down for travel. 
over here on the wall lots of lighting you can just shut off everything from here you see quite a few of these control panels throughout the unit coming over here to your television turn that on Is the TV working? Always carry Shut that work. off. Come down here, JBL Sound Systems, also a remote for this. So three different zones, AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD, CD player. Turn this up. I don't know if we'll pick up any channels in here, but let's run a scan real quick, see if we can get anything. as a searching for channels fireplace not just for looks anymore i can go through all these pretty colors but the biggest thing is the heat folks instead of using your gas when you're plugged into a campsite turn on the heat on this it'll get it toasty in here in no time so here's the volume crank this up nothing but static indoors here uh, three different zones indoors outdoors really nice jbl south system your sofa here real quick put your remote Right here. Turn yourself into a bed here real quick. Stand in the middle does the best. Remove your Velcro cushions. Lift up. Pull your legs out. Pull it towards you. Just say quickly. You have a bed. Keep that sticker. That is a parts number for this sofa in case anything ever goes wrong with it for you. Reverse the process, put it all back. Just remember to lift it back up first. And just as quickly, you're back to your sofa. lighting for over here recliners parachute pull again more lighting here you can be here and just go ahead and shut off all the interior exterior lighting lights here another spot for one of those bluetooth speakers right here also a high and low fan your glass top here makes an excellent backsplash turn on your panel light turn this to light it'll go red hit your spark and there's your flame same thing on the oven turn that to light hit your spark and then set it to the desired temperature panel light also comes in oven light your fridge all the controls and there's Separate manual for that. Here's where your water filter will go in. Your mid bunk room. I'm gonna turn the lights on in here. Accent lights, as well as these lights. So this will fold up, lock that in over here, and this will open up the same way your sofa did in the living room. Prep for a TV over here as well. You can back her there so you can put a TV mount, everything you need for your TV and USB ports. All your individual lighting back here, as well as overhead and accent. Coming up your hallway, your steps will fold out here to get up into the bunk area here lights in here then you can control them from here same thing with that one coming into your bathroom a couple things to mention in here besides all your lighting when traveling make sure that you have this snap down also have a power exhaust vent in here 
back in your bedroom more lighting and you can control this slide from back here another temperature reader 110s next to the bed television back here you don't have to run digital channel scan on this or, i mean you don't have to have a booster on this to pick up channels make sure this door is all the way snapped same thing on both ends and the coolest light of all if you're in bed at night you finally realize i can shut off all my interior and exterior lights from my bed that about covers everything on the inside now let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up before i have a couple more things to mention on your island here you have this little pop-up usb power tower underneath your island here you can put in a big five gallon water bottle because if you want fresh water no matter where you go you can fill that up turn on this drinking station here and access that water right here you also have 110 with gfci reset on the side of your island your trash doors and drawers that's what i like to say make sure all doors and drawers are closed nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in i like to hit number one here that shuts off all my lights shows me any individual lighting i may have had to walk through the unit shut off none come back here hit number one go to slide number one retract now i'm gonna go about halfway with this slide because slide number one is going to be your bedroom slide because i also want you to see it working from here as well so if you have a lot of things in your bedroom up here and you want to watch this come in as you bring as you bring it in Come up here in the bedroom and do it. Shut off the ceiling lights back here. Another door. Make sure this bedroom bathroom door is snapped open. That's one of the doors and drawers to secure. Come back to our little arrows here. We're gonna go to slide number two. Retract. That's gonna be our bunk room. You can hear that coming in. Slide number three. If you heard that little noise when the slide come in, I'll let you hear it again on this slide. Sounds like a clunking noise. All it is, the slide mechanism telling itself not to go any further. It does no harm if you hear it for a second or two. Now you see the importance of doors and drawers. These utilize every single inch. Slide number four, retract. Bring in our living room here. Entertainment center down that side. You notice the bottom always comes in to start out at first because the mechanism is on the bottom. They eventually straighten themselves back out. All right, we're in. Hit number one and shut off all the lights in the unit. All right, now as we exit our unit, we want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this can catch on it. Lift this up. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn your handle. Shut off your lights. Step back in and shut off your awning lights. At this point, we're gonna unhook our cable, our water, and our power. We're gonna come to our low point drain over on our campsite. Get right up underneath there. Open up both of those. And 
We're gonna head around to our off camp side. There's that low point drain. And lastly, this one here. Right there's your freshwater drain. Got all those empty. Come to our hot water heater. Lift up on our pressure release valve. That's gonna dump the remaining of our hot water out. Make sure you put that back down or your door won't go back on. Now you can pull your drain plug. We're gonna come up here to our auto leveling system. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on again by holding the both these down. Now lift it up, get your hitch up on there. Once that's done, you're on tight, go ahead and hit retract all. That's gonna bring up all of your auto leveling. Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is gonna be right in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. 10 foot hose, hook that up there, put the other end in the dump. Come over here and pull your black holding tank. After it sounds like that's no longer draining, go ahead and close it or leave this black handle open. Again, with your water pressure regulator, hook up the hose at the dump station to your black tank flush. Put that handle open, turn on that hose and let that run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Shut that off. Remove your pressure regulator, close that. Close your black handle. Pull your first gray handle. Once that's done, close it. Pull your second gray handle. So these are all gonna be cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Close that second handle. Remove your sewage hose. Store it in a sanitary, convenient place. And head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this eagle for many years to come. Happy camping.